Hi, welcome to this video series on mechanics of forecasting methods. This is a series of five videos and uh, we will talk about moving average in the first video and then exponential smoothing, trend lines, seasonal indices and end this with measures of forecasting accuracy. So this is the first video on moving average. The moving average method is suitable only in the case where the data has random variation. In case there are trends or seasonality in the data, other methods are more suitable. And generally speaking, uh, moving averages is only suitable for short term forecasting. With this information, let's jump into the data with our numbers. Now, we have here data of 50, uh, 20 periods, yeah, 20 periods data and the actual demand. Now, if I plot this, I select the entire period, go to insert and a line chart. Uh, here is the line chart. Let me um, change the axis. So, select data and I edit this to say that the axis is actually the serial numbers. I select the serial numbers. That's the x axis and I say OK. And I say wonderful. I remove the serial numbers from here. Okay, so now this is our data. Now if you see this demand, it's actually randomly varying around probably 135. Now this is a perfect scenario for moving averages. So let's say I have something called as 3 month moving averages. The forecast using 3 month moving average. The forecast for the 4th month is the average of the actual of the first three months. Let me repeat. The forecast of the fourth month is the average of the first three months. I will remove the Excel error. Um, Alright, so this is what is the forecast 140.33 and the actual demand 130. So the forecast for the fifth month would be the average um, AGE average of the fourth month, third month and the second month. Bracket closed. Let me remove the error term again. Uh, the forecast is 139 while the average is 135. Um, I drag this for the remaining part of the data to give us um, the remaining forecasts. Uh, we'll ignore the error message from Excel. Similarly, we could have a four month moving average. Um, Forecast. So, if I have a four month, the average for the fifth month would equal the average of the previous four months. And bracket closed. So, the forecast for the month five is 137.75 as per four month moving average, while the actual demand was 135. So, I copy this, control C, and paste it here to get the answer. These are the averages as per the four month moving average. Well, there is a slight variation to these moving averages with what we call as weighted moving averages. So I put it V E I G H T E D weighted average. Now in weighted average, let's suppose I do a three month weighted average. Let's say a three month weighted average. Three month weighted average and I decide that the most immediate month that is M minus 1 which is the closest so in month 4 month 3 would be the M minus 1 month I would need to give it a weight of 0.5 the M minus 2 month so in month 4 the second month is the M minus 2 I want to give a weight of 0.3 and the M minus 3 month so for month 4, the M minus 3 month would be the month 1. I decide to give a weight of 0.2. Uh, we should ensure that the sum of the weights is 1 because it makes our calculations a lot easier. So the forecast for the month 4 would not be a direct average but would be equal to the weight of the um, previous month, M minus 1 multiplied by the actual demand of M minus 1 plus the weight of M minus 2 multiplied by the actual of M minus 2 plus the weight of M minus 3 
multiplied by the actual of m minus 3. Enter to give me a forecast of 141.7 units for the fourth month. Um, I can just fix the cells of the weights. So since it's the column G, I fix up the column G dollar four dollar three and G dollar two and then control C and copy this formula to give me the weights uh, forecast as for the three month moving average. We can have a similarly a four month weighted moving average. We can change the weights. How to select the weights, which method to select is an issue of probably some other video. And to end it, in this video, you can actually plot the entire data on the graph by um, maybe just pulling this along to see how the various forecasting methods compare. I know this is a bit confusing, uh, but fine, you can expand when you practice. Um, and this can be used to decide which forecasting method out of the four or five or six in the moving average category we have to be used. I hope um, you enjoyed looking at this video. In case you liked it, please like the video on YouTube uh, and do watch the other four videos in this series. Thank you.